Can I see your license? Right. Yes, sir, I do. I understand that. Why are you being hostile? I don't have to talk to you. Politicians are everywhere and in charge of controlling our laws. But what happens when they are the ones who commit crimes? Here are five shocking examples of when politicians realize they've been caught, starting with congregational candidate Martin Hyde, who had been pulled over for going at 57 miles per hour on a 40 mile per hour zone and using his phone while driving. Hi, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm Sebastian Sarazota, Police Department. You're on audio and video recording. The reason for the stop, you were observed going 57 and a 40, and you were on your phone texting while you were doing that. That was at Euclid and Fruitvale. You don't need to point at the officer. I'm not pointing at you. I'm pointing in the direction where it was. I'll just do the chief, as Go right ahead, sir. Can you I see your license? Right? Yes, sir, I do. Can I see your license registration insurance, please? Can you do this? Yes, sir. Right after the officer presents herself and asks for Martin's license, conflict starts, even daring to say, you know who I am, in a bid to be released from his penalty. I'm sorry? I still have a job to do, sir. Yeah, okay. What's your name? Officer Baskin, it's going to be on the citation. Can I see your insurance registration and your license, please? Sir, can I have How your people? You Seven years, sir. Can I see your registration, please? No. You're not going to give me your registration, sir. You can arrest me? I'm asking you if you're going to produce me with your registration. You don't have it on you? Look, go call the chief of immigration. Tell him how rude you've just been to me. Blame this video. Okay. I'm going to call Marlon Brown. Will you call the mayor? Okay. We're not okay, darling. Tell him what to do. Okay, sir. Are you refusing to produce your registration? After a back and forth between the two, we can see how candidate Martin thought higher of himself as he made subtle yet menacing threats to the officer's career or asked her to call her supervisor. But because these tactics proved useless, Martin kept escalating the threats, reminding her that she was making career decisions and then asking why was she doing it. I'm asking you if you have your registration. You're making career decisions. Okay, why are you sir. Doing this? Sir, because you were speeding and you were texting. Is this it? Where's your video? All right. Hang tight. Seeing no cooperation on his side, Officer Sebastian decided to go back to her car and make the appropriate ticket and delivered it to Martin, which, of course, he ultimately refused to accept. Call the supervisor. I just spoke to your boss. Okay. That's not okay. You want your paperwork? Is it your Russian immigrant status that makes you talk to people like this? 10, 14, 10, 10. Call the supervisor. 14 dispatch, can you have my supervisor respond, please? Yeah. And then we'll see who goes. Okay. You don't want no. your paperwork? Oh, you, you don't have a warrant. Sir, you're going to be issued sure a citation. Everything you have to say. I'll wait for the supervisor. You can wait for the supervisor, but I'm going to go through what I need to go through. No, I have no interest. Are you are going to be issued a citation? There's the registration. Okay. Well, you've been already issued a citation for that. For what? For failure to produce your registration. Alright. Sir, you gonna, you're you're gonna right be issued a citation 57 and a 40 for speeding. Your fine is 256. Information in the back. You're gonna have an option to it's plead guilty. Camera. An option to plead not guilty and an option to take a safe driver's course. If you qualify for the course, it will reduce your fine. And it will reduce your points. If you decide to go ahead and do that, just make sure you do a prior to submission of you know payment. What, you know what he said about you? <laughs> You want to hear what he said about you? He could say all he wants about me. I got a job to do, sir. Yeah. You know what he said about okay. you? If he, he fails to complete, you like this. okay. And he's going to have you again. And that's fine. It's not fine. What okay. you said is fine, sir. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and you're being bloody okay. rude to me. To no one's surprise, candidate Martin refused to receive his ticket and said to have called the officer's supervisor. Not only that, but he even dared to say that it was the officer who had been rude to him when only 30 seconds after the conversation started, he had already begun threatening to end her career. You are going to be issued a citation for texting and driving. Okay. You are going to be issued a citation for, for texting and driving. Your fine is 116. 
information in the back. You're going to have an option to plead guilty and an option to plead not guilty. After the officer had given him the citation and the necessary ticket information, she had to go back to her car and wait patiently for her supervisor to come, not without candidate Martin making the situation more troublesome than it already was. Sir, step back into your car or stand on the sidewalk so you don't get hit by a vehicle. It's for your safety. Sir, stand over there. It's for my safety and for your safety. Sir. Finally, after eight minutes of wait, the supervisor showed up. Sarge Frangione is on his way. Okay. Speeding 57 and a 40. Uh, texting while driving, failure to produce his registration. When I asked, he told me I could look it up. Okay. You know who he is. Yes. Right? Yeah, you've got to identify him. Yes. Okay. So you're just going to stay by to cite him, or is that what you. He already got cited. Oh, he has already got yeah. citation. So He's... he just. From the moment I woke up. So he's just waiting for... He's waiting for supervisor, and I guess he spoke to Frangioni, so Frangioni is on his way. Okay. Bobby just pulled up. Okay. Sadly for the officer, the supervisor doesn't seem to be of much help, as the first words that came out of his mouth were, Do you know who he is? Making reference yet again to the power this corrupt politician has, and that they need to tread with caution. Now with the supervisor on the scene, We'll see even more disgusting corruption, and everything, luckily, was caught on camera. Hello, Mr. Hyde. I guess Frangi you start you talked to Sergeant Frangioni by the phone. I did, yeah. Okay, he's on his way. She just re she requested another unit, so that's why another unit. You someone a certificate, uh, ticket for no registration when they've got the registration. She's trying to make her spurs, but it's a big mistake. Well, this one is the expired one, but... Well, it doesn't make it. It'll take two yeah. seconds. Yeah. We're going to make sure that she pays the price for being disrespectful. All caught on camera. Candidate Martin Hyde blatantly threatens the officer in front of the supervisor and refers to we when saying, we are going to make sure she pays the price for being disrespectful, referring to some contacts he might have. Not to mention the complete silence on the supervisor's side when listening to such statements. I've lived here for 25 years. I've Sergeant, represented your unit. I've got no interest in listening to you, young lady. I was talking to my sergeant, sergeant. If you don't mind if we could step over off the road onto the sidewalk. Yeah, oh, just a second, officer. Yeah. Come on then. Yeah, Mr. Hyde, like I said, no, no. you know. I've represented you guys yes, sir. in union discussions. My yes. son is a cop. I'm friends yeah. with the. Yes, sir. Everybody in the police department, this is the first time mm -hmm. anybody has been disrespectful to me. And for what reason? I could care less. If they give write me a ticket, I could care less. I just pay the bloody thing. You don't mm -hmm. think I got the money? Mm -hmm. It's the manner and the nature of it. As Martin said it, it would seem that all the trouble he had caused hadn't been because of the ticket itself, as he would be able to afford it easily, but due to the way in which he had been treated by the police officer. Outrageous. Yeah. yeah. Why would you do that? Why? I mean, yeah. of all the people to do it to. Yeah, I understand, sir. It appears as though the infraction was actually a big deal for Martin, as he kept threatening to end the officer's career. Let me go talk to her and see. Well, it's a waste of time. Yeah. She's got it in her head. I know exactly who she is. Frangione told me exactly who she is. That's fine. Seven years might not turn into eight. Candidate Martin continues to threaten the police officer's job directly to the supervisor until the supervisor leaves the scene to wait for the sergeant's arrival. Stay in your car. You can go to the station. Yep, go to the station. Hey, Martin. Yeah, I have to leave it on. After the sergeant's awaited arrival, the first thing that seems to concern Martin is the body cam on his vest, this being the reason for these body cams' existence in the first place to avoid any type of corruption that might occur in these situations. All right, so here's the thing. She lied about the cell phone thing. Okay. She lied about the, I don't know, the speed. I could care less. You can give me the ticket all day long. I could care okay. less about that. And then I gave her the registration. And she, before, she says, oh, your registration? It's in the car there somewhere. She goes off, she writes me a ticket. She brings me back a citation. I said, there it is. Okay. And she still gives me it. Okay. All right. I, she's being fun. And the thing is, I appreciate that. I, 
back you guys left, right, and center. I understand that. I do. I do. I trust me. I do and know I that. Don't expect better treatment, but I don't expect worse treatment. If that's how you treat people, that's unacceptable. Okay. I understand. I understand your frustration. And I can get the video and I can play it. To I, I'm going. The I'm going. I, I understand yeah. that, but you know the thing is, I don't take kind. She knew exactly because I said to her, I said, "Yeah, right away." I said, "Yeah, she's like, yeah I know. straight away, right in the tickets." Why? Well, she's a traffic officer. Yeah, that's what we do. Traffic, but I understand. Yeah, I understand that's what she do. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not what you do, and you know it. Listen, she well, has I'm, a job to do. I'm not. Listen, I, I'm going to look way. at the. I'm going to look at the video. I, I understand your concerns. I'm going to look at the video. I notified everybody in the chain of command right now. That's what I was doing. That's why I was not coming here. I thought you were going to meet me at the station, but it's not a big deal. I'll, I'm going to. She's going right now to dock her video. Right now, she's going to dock the video. And if there's problems, you will be the first to know. Well, I know there's problems. The difference is, I'll do something about. It. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I'm going to take your complaint. Is what I'm doing. That's the first step. You know, how can you write a ticket for no registration when you've got the registration? I mean, as if I get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar car. I've lived here for twenty five years. And I don't register a car. Why do that? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Well, you tell me what the point is. It, it's just a state statute that she enforces. She's not the only traffic officer Would you that writes. Give a ticket for that? I, I really don't leave the office. <laughs> I understand right. what you're saying. I understand you no, have a video I, on there, uh, but the fact is, nobody in their right mind would give a ticket for that to me. No. Notice how he adds me to the end of his sentence. He doesn't want special treatment, but uses language that so obviously tells us he does. After a few more minutes of an unfruitful discussion and several more threats to the officer's job, he finally decided to leave the scene. To everyone's satisfaction, he ended up paying the given ticket. Losing that year's elections was unmasked in front of the entire world and had to do an apology video that makes fake too big of a word for it. You threatened her position. Why did you do that? I, I tried to bully her. I mean, uh, I'm not proud of it. Um, she knew. Um, and if you watch the video, the other cops, when they came up and said, uh, you know who that is too. And the reason they said that isn't because I'm important, it's but because they know. I've spent hundreds of hours working on behalf of causes for Sarasota Police Department, for its pay, for officers' discipline, to help them out. And uh, therein lies the irony. Uh, my own son, my oldest son, is a deputy sheriff. And uh, so this isn't a question of uh, Martin Hyde disliking cops. This is a question of Martin Hyde being in a ratty mood on a Monday morning and acting in a way that uh, he regrets. But uh, I am sorry. Um, and uh, I'd like to think that uh, I'll learn from it. I'd like to think other people might learn something from it too. But regardless of what you think, corrupt and entitled politicians who think themselves above the law doesn't stop here. Police Chief Jonathan Hemphill had been driving when he was pulled over at a traffic stop for a tint violation and for later having an unofficial police plaque in the neighboring city of Molina, Georgia on August 25th, 2022. Little did the officers who stopped him know who they were going against. What are you doing? Here, call, sir. You go out. Can I say hello? Was that illegal? No, yeah, no, sir. Uh, the reason why we're stopping you was because of the wind tent violation. I blinked my blue lights at you to let you know who I was. Yes, sir. Well, we didn't know with it, you know, that's not a government tag. That is, so an, that is a unofficial tag. Okay. That, that tag's not even on file. I see, yes. Well, we have to catch up the bill to run it and everything like that, sir. So, so I won't blink my blue lights at you next time. I'll let well, you just sit there. I was just speaking. I'm the police chief in Zebra. Well, nice to meet you, sir. Matt, Matt Polk worked for me. Your chief worked for me. Yes, sir. There's no need to get upset. I, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because I spoke to you when I come by, and now right. you're pulling me sir, over. Sir, I've never met you damn in my life. I understand sir, that. Why are you being hostile? Yeah, easy. I don't I don't have to talk to you. Okay. Easy. I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. Why are you being hostile right we're, now? Do y'all going to write me a ticket? Are you going to write me a ticket? Sir, we're just trying. I'm the police chief in Zebra. Do you want to write me a ticket? Why are you coming up to me you like that? Me a I'm doing my job, right? What are you stopping for? I'm stopping for one. I have blue lights. lights. In my car. Okay, you know how many uh, officers have blue lights? Are you writing me a ticket? Yes or no? I'm presenting my Are you writing me a ticket? I'm pissing the lead. Do you have a driver's license? Sure, I have my driver's license. Literally. I have my driver's license. I'm gonna make it. I'm fixing to make it a whole lot more. Your boss. Eleven, eleven.
I'm not going to go there, right? It took no more than a few seconds to fully see Chief Jonathan with an extremely aggressive and disrespectful attitude towards both officers, but more so towards the female officer on the scene who was able to keep calm and respond properly despite being told he was a police chief. Then, the police officers ran the chief's license on their computer at his request. And following this, we find out that the license plate actually didn't come back to the vehicle Chief Jonathan was driving. When the officer tried to notify him about these results, we can safely say that he wasn't really happy about it. Yeah. What? She's about bringing your driver's license All back right. up. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, first, when we ran the, the tag, it came back to like a Dodge Ram, so we're it's just not confirming. A Dodge Ram. Right. Yes, sir. It's, it's a ghost just, tag. Yes, sir. We'll you make sure you're the same back with that tag. tag. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're just. You must have run it wrong. You must have run it wrong because you want to come back to a Dodge yeah. Ram. We, we were confirmed. They, they, they let us know. Right. Right. So, so it's still coming back to a Dodge Ram now? Sir, can, can I ask why you're so upset? Is it still coming back to a Dodge Ram now? No, we got it fixed. Why are you so upset? No, you didn't fix it. Did Is it still coming back to a Dodge Ram right now? No, it came back not on five. That's right. Because you run it wrong. Sir. Somebody they run it wrong. Either to, you did or they did. We're about to get the information. Okay. And get I got your to chief you. on the phone right now. That's yes, fine. Sir, That's understand. fine. That's fine. Can you calm down for us, no. please? I appreciate your service. I appreciate okay. your service. All right. I'm just saying, I spoke to you guys. I didn't have to do that. I could have eased on by y'all. I appreciate the job y'all out here doing. Chief. I I'm trying to be respectful with you. I understand okay? that. I understand I'm not, that. I'm not raising my voice enough. I understand that. To you, right? I understand that. All right, let's. But I'm trying to tell you. The only okay. thing I'd done wrong was spoke. Y'all never would have pulled me over if I had to flick my blue lights. No, at you. sir. No, we were going to pull your no, ass. Actually. I'm no, not going to lie to you. I'm no, telling you, you straight up, okay? Okay. All right. But. Like I said, you know, there's people out here in per se police officer with blue lights. Well, you threw my license. She threw my license. If she is getting them for me, she'll bring it to you, sir. Okay, well that's fine. I'm just Pray trying to. Get I'm trying to talk with you. I don't want to talk anymore about it. All righty. Despite having been pulled over for committing an infraction, being absolutely disrespectful towards both his officers and his license plate not coming back to the car he was driving, Police Chief Jonathan Hemphill was finally let go with just a ticket and no more significant punishment for his infractions. Just showing once more how corrupt people that are supposed to use their power for good just abuse it instead. But being a politician pulled over by some street infraction is nothing compared to being one that's found with powerful and illegal drugs. Matthew Riley, a former Cranston City Council member, was arrested and charged with drug possession on May 18th, 2023, after he was caught sleeping in his car with a crack pipe right after court. Do you have any weapons on you? No, not at all. And it is up until here that Matthew seemed like a normal person to the officer until he realized who he actually is. Oh, no way, dude, really? Yes, yes. I was just taking, I was just on my way back from court. Bro. Well, arrest was going to come check you out, man. I can't let you go. You were literally choking in your sleep. Somebody flagged me down about it. Oh, I have sleep apnea. I'm sorry. Well, and then you have a crack pipe in your hand. So it's like... Please, come on. sorry. Listen, I, I have a body camera. Obviously, yeah, everything obviously. I have is recorded. You know that. And I, what I've observed is on camera, so I can't pretend I didn't. You know, so arrest is going to come here. Oh, and Jesus. they're going to check you out. You know, you, as far as I know, there's no drugs anywhere, so I no. can't, you know, so there's not a criminal investigation. There's more a health or well-being check type Thank thing. Thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I obviously have to document it, you know. You can have that back. Thank you. There will, will be no arrest. What? There will be no arrest. No. Um, is there any, are there any drugs in the car or anything like that? No, no, nothing. Right. So far in the conversation, Matthew is told that he's not under arrest and that this whole routine is only for his health security. He shows a sign of relief after knowing this fact. Little did he know that it wasn't going to be that simple. How long have uh, you had this problem, man? It, it, was a, it was a relapse. I've been clean for 13 years. Alright. Just went through a really, really bad divorce recently. Okay. Um... Uh... Do you know if any of that was laced with fentanyl or anything? Because you were out, out, and like, 
look like you were choking. Here is a crucial moment for Matthew to show cooperation and honesty with the officer, but instead, he decides to lie about his usage of fentanyl, which is one of the first triggers of his future arrest. What's wrong with this guy? Your whole life. Mm hmm. Down the drain for a while. So you don't know him at all? Sadly for Matthew, the substance found in his car finally tested positive for crack cocaine and fentanyl. He was finally arrested, and it was here when one of the police officers showed once again how difficult the situation was for them, and he even shared some parental advice to Matthew. Uh, once or twice. Yeah, but whoever you buy it from, if you, if you continuously buy it from, you know who you're buying it from. This, you don't know what people are putting in it. No, I, I understand. You know, they may have made that, but that's a big rock you got in there. What's that, a $50 piece? Uh, 100 100. Yeah, so I just, just got back into this. I, I, you gotta, this is gonna, listen, I, this is terrible situation. We're all in a tough spot, but we gotta do what we gotta do right by the numbers. It'll help you in the end. Believe me when I tell you. And you'll say to us a month from now, good, best thing that ever happened to me. That's what they all tell us. You can't go down this road anymore. No, no. God forbid we find you dead. That, that would, that's terrible. Having this arrest gone public, the 41-year-old politician ended up resigning from the city council and as chairman of the Cranston Republican Party Thursday after pressure from the mayor and other council members. But politicians getting caught and being forced to quit their jobs are everywhere. But this one is a bit more special. Karen Z. Turner, a Port Authority of New York and a New Jersey commissioner whose daughter had been pulled over by two police officers as part of a routine stop, proved, yet again, how being up in the ranks can get to your head to the point of thinking yourself above the law and the consequences these actions can bring. Why were they pulled over, first of all? Now don't call me miss, I'm commissioner, thank you. The video begins by showing us Karen's daughter, whose car had been confiscated due to having a vehicle registration that was two years outdated and the driver didn't have an insurance card. It is right here where we can see Karen's daughter signaling to her with her hand, to which she parks the car and approaches the officers. What unfolded next was one of the biggest proofs of endurance we've ever seen on the police officer's side towards corruption and the disrespect and entitlement of people in higher ranks like this commissioner. How did he get the car back? Valid registration, valid insurance card. How do they know that this is her car? Like, don't you need to give us a receipt or something? Like, how are they going to know that this one This is a receipt. Her? This goes on file. Hi, I'm Karen Turner. Hi. Oh. It's not her. I'm a resident. There you go. It's fine. We don't, I, don't, I don't need that. Okay. Fine. I'm you're, Karen you're just Turner. Here to, you're just here as a rider, right? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm here as a concerned citizen and friend okay. of the mayor and okay. been in Tenafly for I'll 20 years. Okay. I take full responsibility for them. And what is the reason they were pulled over? The driver has all the information, he'll tell you. No, 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 no. I need to know. No, you don't need to know. Okay. You are not involved here. You're picking them no, up? No, no, no. I'm involved. Trust okay. me. Well, I'm, I'm very not going involved. to tell you. He's the driver of the automobile. He's over 18. That's all you need to know. Right after she approaches the officers, she immediately asks for information about the whole situation going on. To her big surprise, She's denied of it by the police officer who informs her that she is not in any right to know, especially when the people involved are all over 18 year olds who are considered adults by the law. Despite being denied any involvement in the situation, she persists by giving them her ID and telling them that she's the commissioner of the port authority, to which she's yet again faced with a who cares by the officers. Okay, okay. If you can credentials. Okay, okay. We've I, you need it. Okay, so if there's a problem, I think I have... There's no problem. Well, I think there's a problem. It's an unregistered vehicle. Okay, let's hear, what is, why were they pulled over, first of all? Miss. Now don't call me Miss, I'm Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner? Yes. All due why respect. were they pulled over? All due respect? Yep. Why the driver will tell you. No, no, no. I need yes, to know. Yes, The car's getting towed out. Why is the car getting pulled? Go ask him. No, no, I'm asking. You're the person who ordered it, and trust me. Miss, this does not involve you 1%. Yeah, it does. It does. It does, because I'm picking them up, and Once I'm offering time. to take responsibility for them, and you can't even tell me the charges. I'm also an attorney, so 
That's fine. And if you can't tell me, what is the problem? That's fine. Why is it such a difficult to say why they're being pulled over and why the car's yes. being towed? Because everything has already been explained. I know, but I know. Why, why, do, you, why do you need to know? Because this is impacting me because I got four people who are coming back to my house, including people who live in New Haven attending Yale Graduate School, a Ph.D. student, and I don't know why it's so difficult to say what the problem is. The problem, Miss Karen, excuse me, Commissioner Karen, is that in the United States, you can only drive a car without registration for a period of 30 days after you bought it. So after the period ends, it is compulsory for everyone to register the vehicle. Otherwise, you can face penalties of up to $500 or even 60 days in jail if you get caught or pulled over and you don't have the necessary papers as it seems to be the case here. When asked again, the officers responded that it was all about her demeanor towards them that made them treat her the way they did, as honestly, if someone comes up to you and kindly asks what the situation is, especially if your family is involved, they most likely will explain it. On the contrary, which is the case now, she acted as if she deserved to know because of her political position from the second one. If that wasn't enough, Commissioner Karen even began to act aggressively towards the officers as they kept denying her any type of information that she was requesting. They take a step be. back. Take a step if back. You for can't me, even please. describe what take, the problem is. Take a step back for me. I can't move back any farther. I keep moving back farther, and you okay. keep moving closer to me. Because you can't can you even take a step back? Put a sentence together take a on what back. the problem is. Because I'm not because of the, your demeanor. No, I came I'm in under very no nicely. I'm under no legal obligation to okay. tell you. And I'm under okay. no legal obligation to tell you what I will be doing. Seeing no cooperation from the two officers, Karen decided to start threatening them in what we would consider a subtle way at least for now. After a back and forth between the officers and the commissioner on the matter and having no response, Karen's had enough of it. You know what? I'm very disappointed in the way the two of you are acting. You cannot even tell me a mother living in Tennessee for 20 years with two kids who went through the school system, what the problem is. And that's shocking. It's shocking that you can't well, even give me a sentence. I think no. we should so conclude this, piece, this. I will Just for safety absolutely. reasons, this is a high-speed road. I think we should all get off of the road. It's you a little wanted, bit dangerous for I'm us being so out here sorry. as long as we were Thank anyway. Thank you for your concern with my safety. Okay. I don't need it. You can't put a sentence together? Sorry. Okay. That's pathetic. Okay. And you are a disappointment. And you are just following him. So you are also a disappointment. Okay. Okay. You can't put together a sentence okay. of what the are, problem is. Are you finished is. now? Are you finished, ma'am? I'm shocked. Are I'm shocked and very okay. disappointed. You, you Thank may, you, you may for your take help. Them. You may okay. take them now. You may not tell me when to take my child. You may shut the f*** up and not tell me when I may take my kids and her friends okay. who are PhD students from MIT and Yale. Okay. You may tell me nothing because you told me nothing. Shame on both of you. Having had an outburst towards both the officers, she doesn't even doubt threatening to use her influence and contacts to get both the officers fired, to which the officers responded in a remarkable way. I will be talking to the chief of police, Please. and I will be speaking to the mayor. Badge number 540. Not, I got your name. I got your name. Just to make sure there's I know no discrepancy. There's no dis... Matt is the first no. name. No, don't you worry. As long as you got all the information right. I got all your information, okay. sweetheart. You can't put a sentence together. That's shameful. Okay. That's okay. shameful. Have a pleasant uh, weekend. You have a wonderful right. weekend. You're going to be very... Once they happily saluted each other, the car was finally towed, and despite her persistence in the same argument, she ended up leaving, not without any consequences, however, as after this video went public, it went viral, which forced her to resign from her position as a commissioner and make an appropriate apology video. The conduct captured on the video is bullying and obstructionist. But despite all the politicians we've seen so far getting caught and ending up paying for what they've done in one way or another, there is one specific case in which the story turned out a little different. Lancaster County, Pennsylvania Judge Dennis E. Reinacre had been pulled over for tailgating and honking at an East Lampeter Township officer in an unmarked police car. Sir, go back into your car. I'll be with you in a second. You're going to check.
check the registration on this plate soon, mister. As the police officer was ordered, he went into his car and checked the registration on the plate of the car, finding out who he really just had pulled over and what unfolded is one of the biggest proofs of political corruption ever caught on camera. Have a good day, Judge. You bet. And simple as that. If you are positioned in the right spot with the right amount of power, it doesn't matter if you get caught because you can free yourself whenever you want. Hope you like this video and subscribe for more.